The Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative has said that the nation has lost 619.7 million barrels of crude oil valued at 46.16 billion naira or 16.25 trillion naira in 12 years from 2009 to 2020. It also welcomed the decision of the federal government to set up a special investigative panel on oil theft and losses in Nigeria, describing it as a bold, courageous and timely given the havoc the menace had wreaked in oil production and the country's revenue generation. We will be looking at that on the show today. Plus, the International Monetary Fund IMF in its most recent edition of the World Economic Outlook lowered its global growth forecast for this year and next. Well, according to its baseline growth forecast, the global economy is expected to grow by 2.8% and uh, in 2023 from 3.4% in 2020 before recovering to 3.0% in 2024. We'll be looking at that on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. undermining Nigeria's ability to derive value from its status as, a non, as an oil-producing country. An executive secretary of NATI, Dr. Obonaya Oji, said the findings and recommendations on tackling crude oil theft have been submitted to the president through the Presidential Committee on Crude Oil Theft, in which NATI also served as member. Now, energy analyst Omono Okonkwo joins me right now to look at this developing issues. Many thanks for joining me, Omono. Good morning. All right, it is indeed my pleasure. Now, let's start uh, by asking this. Now, NATI policies brief on crude oil theft, and the data shows that between 2009 and 2020, Nigeria lost 619.7 million barrels of crude oil, valued at $46.16 billion or $16.25 trillion. What is the economic opportunity cost of this loss? Okay, so first of all, in 2022, President Buhari made a presentation to the National Assembly for the budget uh, for 2022 fiscal year. And that amount was 16 trillion naira. So you can imagine, mm. for 2022 budget, that's the exact same amount that was missing to crude oil theft within that period. Now, aside from that, what could this money have been used for? Let's start with oil. We could have used part of that money to act at least repair our refineries. I mean, the Wari, Kaduna, and Potakos refineries. We could also use part of that money to develop more refineries, right? And also on oil, on the oil sector, we could also use part of that money to clean up all the Niger Delta oil communities that have been, you know, that, that have been facing a lot of environmental issues because of crude oil spill. Now, these people have been agitated. They've been, they've been, you know, talking to the media and exposing all these things. And they tell you, okay, we cannot farm, we cannot fish because our waters, our rivers are corrupted, right? Yeah. Part of that money could have been used to clean up these communities. Now, let's go to natural gas. We have lots of natural gas in Nigeria. But guess what? We are not able to process this natural gas because we do not have the processing facility. We could have used part of that money to create 
or rather to build infrastructure so we can make use of our natural gas. Mm. We can convert raw gas to liquefied petroleum gas, which is cooking gas. We could have used it also to transform raw gas also to liquefied natural gas and compress natural gas. Now let's look at other critical sectors of the economy. Education. How many out of school children do we have in Nigeria right now? Millions, over 20 million out of school children in Nigeria. Now we could have used part of that money to fund education. Let's talk about healthcare. We are, we are trying to say, oh, doctors should stop um, relocating to other or to developed countries, right? But we are not addressing the issues that are making these doctors to travel out of Nigeria, right? These doctors are smart. They are skilled. They've done the impossible with the little resources available in hospitals, right? Look at the primary health care centers we have across the country. It's, they are all, you know, in a sorry state. Mm. Now, we could have used part of that money to get equipment for doctors to work with, right? And we, 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 if you talk about the insecurity, we are having a lot of problems with all kinds of terror groups arising from all, all, right. all parts of the country, right? I'm on so very, very quickly. Not, if, if security agencies are lacking arms, mm. right, we should have used part of that money to buy arms. All right. So the list is empty. I know it's really, really limitless, but for sake of time, let's just look at some critical recommendations and that Nati actually brought. It is asking for uh, tracking of Nigeria's crude swap, uh, the crude swap deals. Uh, how far do you think this can actually go in actually stemming the tide? Well, it can go a long way if these recommendations are taken from just paper to action steps, right? I remember for, for, for a number of years now, Nati has, you know, um, recommended a lot of action steps when it comes to crude oil theft, when it comes to fuel subsidies. But at the end of the day, none of this is implemented. Nigeria has an implementation problem. That is established, right? So recommending that we need to track crude swap deals, right, is a fantastic um, recommendation. But we need to be implemented at the end of the day. We need all stakeholders to work together to make sure that there is transparency in the oil and gas sector, as well as the solid mineral sector. So it's not just about writing it on paper, it is also about taking those recommendations and putting it into action steps. And another thing, you know, Lacey has always advocated for transparency in Nigeria's oil and gas sector. That is a given, right? Now, if really the oil and gas sector is operating, or rather operators in the oil and gas sector, are working and making sure that Nigerians are aware of what they are doing. Guess what? We do trust. And that engenders growth in the sector. With all of and another steps. reason why we are having crude swap deals is because our refineries are not working. Mm. Now, in 2024, Dangote refinery is supposed to come on stream, right. right? If that comes on stream and our uh, Wari, Kaduna, and Portacos refineries are working, and private companies are able to set up modular refineries and buy the oil in Naira, not yeah. in dollars, because that's a problem for them. I mean, we'll be able to, you know, reduce crude oil swap deals to right. some level. As we round off now, for, for sake of time, I'm, I'm, I'm on, let's talk about uh, this uh, proposal of the federal government concerning the removal of a uh, fuel subsidy. Uh, specifically, it is uh, actually budgeting uh, a whopping sum of 800 million US dollars as palliative. Uh, do you think that it is that is enough in itself to cushion the uh, the aftermath of um, the removal? Well, it's not enough, obviously. Even the uh, Minister for Finance, Dr. Zainab Ahmed, she has admitted to, uh, to that that is not enough. They are looking for other ways to make sure that they have more funds to disburse. Now, I would be more comfortable if that same money or other monies are going to be realized from this plan are put into the repair and rehabilitation of our refine of our local refineries. Number one, and I will also be more comfortable if this money is put into transportation subsidies, not from Abuja. But from, uh, uh, from state, you know, if you're targeting 774 local government areas in the country, mm. you need to start from the state, not Abuja. So if you want people to be able to say, oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, the government has provided the transportation subsidy for me and my family, you do not start from Abuja. You start from the state. Right. The states are well equipped to know all their local government areas. They are well equipped to understand the, you know, every state is different. They are well equipped to understand the, the realities of their state. So if you, if you want to do transportation subsidies, it's better to start from the state.
So every local government area and people living in those areas are able to benefit from subsidies uh, 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 or rather from transportation subsidies. So I would be more comfortable if it was if the money was put into that instead of just saying, well, you take this money, you take this money. It's not going to go anywhere. That's the truth. All right, thank you, Omona. I wish we had more time to look at um, all of the other issues, uh, but then uh, we'll bring you some other time as um, uh, you know, the information and, of course, this development uh, continue. We have been speaking with energy analyst Omona Okonkwa uh, with uh, Naira Metrics. Thanks for being a part of the program. We do appreciate your insights. Thank you. All right, it is still Business Insight on PLUS TV Africa. We still have um, the economic outlook for the world coming up next. Uh, before that, we'll just give you a bit of an insight on how to write an informal business proposal. Stay with us.